like this uh, that are out there of oh, extraterrestrial or a large uh, hairy creature with uh, arms that hang down uh, beside its, be you know, more down on its sides. I told him my name, and when I told him my name, he said he was called Cole. There's not anything from this earth that I'm not quite sure of. You're listening to the Strangeology Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Foran, and this is your place to explore the weird, strange, and unexplained. From cryptids and creatures, the paranormal, aliens and UFOs, forbidden knowledge, ancient mysteries, conspiracies, and more. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for hanging out today. Coming up on today's edition of the show is a conversation about encounters with Bigfoot and Dogmen in the Appalachias, which is a perfect way to start the spooky season. I hope you all enjoyed my recent two-part series, America's Cryptid Road Trip, where I covered the top cryptid for every state in the United States. And thank you so much for also checking it out over on the Strangeology YouTube channel as well. Definitely do check it out there if you haven't yet, because I made a whole big video edit with a lot of interesting and fun graphics and all of that. It was a really big undertaking, and I'm planning on doing more videos like that soon. Maybe not as long and extensive, but there are so many stories out there that I can talk about that can be enhanced in the form of visual media. So definitely stoked on doing more of that really soon. So stay tuned on that front. Anyway, spooky season is here, although it does seem to be off to a bit of a rough start. At Strangeology HQ, we recently had to say goodbye to a beloved family pet, our best buddy, Kitty Cat, who was around for a very long time. And then since this episode is centered in Appalachia, Eastern Tennessee specifically, I'm sure everyone knows at the time of this recording at this point that eastern Tennessee, western North Carolina, and Georgia were hit very bad by Hurricane Helene, and the guest for today's episode was actually impacted by all of the flooding. Thankfully, he and his family are safe, but I'm going to be leaving a donation link in the show notes because a lot of folks out there still need help. So if you can... Anything helps for these people who are in desperate need of it. So definitely check that out in the show notes. Now, as far as other updates go, my last event that I'll be vending at this year is happening next weekend, October 19th, at the Viaport Aquarium Mall in Schenectady, New York. It's the Do You Believe Festival. It's the second year they're doing it. It's going to be a great time. There's going to be a bunch of vendors and speakers. So if you're in the area, definitely come on out, check the event out, come say hi at my table. And yeah, that's going to be the final event of the year. And I'm working on trying to start scheduling and getting set up for some events for 2025. So those will be announced in the near future. But working on that in the background as we speak. And just a couple quick reminders before the show starts. Don't forget to set your podcasting apps to auto download so you never miss a new episode when it drops. And don't forget to follow Strangeology over on all of my social accounts. You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, etc. at Strangeology. Instagram is strange.ology for more content, updates, giveaways, and all of that. And also make sure to visit my website, strangeology.com, where I have a blog with a bunch of articles. There's a calendar where I will list events that I'll be at. You can also sign up to my mailing list to receive occasional updates and occasional promo codes for my Etsy shop. If you're looking to pick up any 14 gear, I've got a brand new Halloween design in the shop as well that just went live the other day featuring a bunch of your favorite cryptids appropriate for the spooky season and Halloween. It's a really fun design. I had a lot of fun making it. So definitely check that out. It's strangeology.etsy.com and the links will be in the show notes, of course. All right, that's enough of that. Why don't we get into today's episode? So on this one, I brought on 
a brand new guest, Bigfoot researcher Harley Owens, and we had a wild conversation about his experience diving into the world of Bigfoot research, dogmen research, in the Appalachias, doing boots on the ground investigations, and even having a encounters with these creatures. And one brief note before we get started, there was some audio latency issues on my end with my previous audio interface that I recorded with, which was apparently failing. So I have a new one now. Sounds great. But there were a couple sections where the audio on my end started sounding a little bit choppy. I tried to clean it up the best I could. It's mostly listenable, but apologies ahead of time. I know that can be annoying for some of you out there, but this is a very interesting episode. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, folks, welcome back to the show. Joining me today is Harley Owens from Bigfoot Reports and Data over on YouTube. Harley is a researcher and investigator based in Eastern Tennessee. So how's it going today, man? Uh, glad to, I, find, glad to finally good. have you on. Yeah, yeah <laughs> sir. It's, it's been a minute. You know, we've been trying to get this worked out and we finally made it happen. And I'm glad to be here. You know, it's been a long time coming and I'm looking forward to sharing some of my encounters and experiences and, you know, and just talking a little bit about what's going on here in Eastern Tennessee, because quite frankly, there's a lot. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, can you can you tell my listeners a little bit about your what got you into uh, big thing? Yeah. Uh, so, growing up, I always heard the stories, you know, of the mountain giants, the wood boogers, and all this other stuff that's crawling around in the mountains. Well, I didn't buy into it. You know, I believed in black panthers. You know, because I've heard them. You know, and there's nothing like hearing a black panther scream and echoing through the valleys. So. 2020, uh, I go out, and when I was working in an auction company at this time before I became a lineman, because when I got out of high school, I didn't want to be a lineman like my dad, so I went and worked for my dad's neighbor who owned an auction company. So we went up to Pound, Virginia. Uh, I was up there for two weeks. A uh, week prior, me and a buddy of mine went up, and we were talking to the owner of this sawmill that we were auctioning off. So... We got to talking to the guy and he was telling us about this bear that was coming into the sawmill and taking trash out of the dumpsters and stuff. And I was like, well, he's a pretty good size bear. He's like, yeah, he's decent size. He said, but there's far worse things in the woods than him. And I'm like, whoa, what is this guy talking about? You know, I'm like, okay, there's venomous snakes, you know, there's mountain lions and all this other stuff. And I'm like, what, what could be that bad? And then I jokingly said in my head, like black panthers, that's what he's talking about. Bigfoot was the last thing on my mind. So go, going on the rest of that week, nothing happened. We had the auction on a Saturday. Uh, my boss came up to me. He said, you want to stay up here for another week? And I was like, yeah. And I said, that's fine with me. I said, need more money. So I stayed up there for another week, and I helped people load stuff that they bought. But Sunday came around, and it was raining. And I was like, you know what? I'm not just going to sit in this hotel all day. I said, I'm going to go out here and get some work done. So... I went out there and I was riding around my skidster, getting stuff ready for whoever was going to come pick up their equipment. Well, I got done doing what I was doing and I walked over around next to the wood line and I got to looking and I'm like, these tracks are weird. I was like, either that's a really big person or I jokingly said that's Bigfoot. Now I wear a size 12 boot and these tracks were a good three or four inches longer than my foot. And I'm like, okay, this is this is probably just a homeless person or somebody's playing a prank on me. So, but little did I know, I mean, I'm out in the middle of the boonies at this old rundown sawmill. So going on Monday, nothing happened. Tuesday, nothing happened. Wednesday, September 23rd, 2020 was the day that literally rocked my world, you know? So I get out there that morning and I had a guy already at the gate. So I'm like, well, crap. So I, I normally would get out there around seven o'clock in the morning and unlock the gates so I could let people in. So he had this person had already beat me there. I unlocked the gate at the top of the mountain and we drove down into the holler and I unlocked the second gate. So I'm driving back in through there and I get him loaded up. He just had like two or three pallets of stuff and he went on his way. 
So I'm just sitting there and I'm like, okay. My hours went by and I'm like, okay, there's nobody else going to come in here today. I mean, I just sat there in the skid steer. I think I was playing Angry Birds, if I'm not mistaken. I know I was playing a game on my phone, but I started to get hungry and I went over to the service truck to get a Coca Cola and a peanut butter sandwich out of the cool. Now, that's all that's all I was eating for lunch. That's all I'll ever eat for lunch to this day. <laughs> I love these peanut butter sandwiches. So I get over to the service truck and I open the cooler and I heard this growlish grunt and I'm like, whoa, what was that? Like, I had never heard a sound like that before. I, I grew up hunting and fishing. You know, I, I, I know the sounds of the woods and that was something that stuck out to me. I was like, well, that was weird. So I, I looked over towards the wood line because where I was at, I was in this flat and there were some cliffs around the side and I'm like, okay, whatever this is over here in the woods. So I got to look, and I was like, okay, there's nothing there. So I go to try and take a bite out of my sandwich, and I heard it again. And I'm like, well, what the crap? And I looked up on this cliff face, and it was walking along that cliff. And I was like, well, that's that bear that he was telling me about. Because I could just see it moving through the brush. I couldn't tell for sure, but I knew I seen something black moving through the brush. And I'm like, okay, that's that bear. So I kept looking up in that area. Well, I looked down. And I looked back up. When I looked back down, when I looked back up that second time, I seen it. And it was peeking out from around some bushes looking at me. And I was like, I knew instantly what it was when I seen it. I was like, holy crap, that's a Bigfoot. These things are real. People aren't crazy. So I'm standing there looking at this thing. Now, it's about 65, 70 yards away from me up on this cliff peeking out looking at me. And I'm just like, if I don't get a picture of this thing, nobody's going to believe me. So I knew if I was going to take a video of it, it would have probably already been gone. So I pulled my phone out. I took a picture of it, and the weirdest thing happened. I had a brand new iPhone 8 at that time, and it just shut off. And I was like, well, what the crap? I was hitting the button trying to get it to come back on, and I was just sitting here locked eyes with this thing. I mean, it looked like it was looking right through me. Like, I mean, I was puny compared to how this thing was. I'm 6'6", six, six, and I, those, this thing was a lot bigger than me. So I'm just sitting here looking, and it just turns around and just – disappears up into the mountain and i'm like holy crap so i go in the truck i'm trying to plug my phone up because i think that it died and when it comes back on a couple hours later it had the same percent battery that it had when it died and i'm just like well holy crap this is weird so i'm sitting there and i'm still trying to wrap my head around that i just seen a bigfoot and it's getting around dusky dark so i'm packing up everything and i'm finishing up paperwork that i have to do and that's when they started hollering. And let me tell you, I have never heard anything quite like what I heard that night. And I have audio that I can send to you. And I actually have that photograph, too, I can send to you. But the audio. Yeah, I'd love to see and hear it all. <laughs> dude, that, the audio is unbelievable. Like, they were howling and way, like it was unlike anything I have ever heard. And. I had a spectral analysis done on that audio recently, and it ranges from 250 hertz all the way up to 2,000 hertz. I've had people tell me it was coyotes, elk, everything other than what it was. And there was multiple creatures in these recordings. Um, now, I got out of there after that. You know, I was like, you know what? I'm getting out of here. But I had to come back the next day for somebody else to come pick up their stuff. So I got back in there and I'm just sitting here. I'm like, man, if I, if I see this thing, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm standing there and I, I go over to this trail and I find a fresh trackway from where this thing had came down into that sawmill area. Now I'm six, six and I've got a pretty good stride and the stride in between each track, I couldn't do. Now I've got the video of that trackway as well. Um, but this, it was unbelievable. Like me being six six, and for something to step like that did, it it's crazy. So I remember distinctly that evening they started howling again right at about the same time. And there was multiple different ones, but they were further off. They were much more distant. And yet they still produce the same quality of sound to 250 hertz all the way up to 2000. Like it was unbelievable. So Friday rolls around and I'm leaving. And I go to this drive-in diner in Pound, Virginia called Robos. So I, I seen these old guys sitting there. I'm like, okay, if anybody's going to know what the heck this is, it's going to be these guys. 
So I just go over to him and I just track up conversation. And then I drop the ball on him. I'm like, y'all ever seen or heard anything weird in these mountains? And they're like, well, what did you see? And I said this. And I, I showed them the picture of it. And I showed them the videos of the tracks and I, photos of the tracks. And I let them listen to the, the audio. And they all got quiet. And they were looking back and forth at each other. And one of them said, well, I, well that's a, that's what they call the devil monkeys. And I'm like, devil monkeys? I said, so that's a Bigfoot? And they're like, yeah, devil monkey, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, all the same thing. But I'm like, that engraved itself into my mind. I never heard the term devil monkeys before in my life. And I, it really shattered my worldview. Uh, after that, I stopped deer hunting. Uh, it was fishing, everything to do with the outdoors. Like, I would go to work because I work on the power lines and stuff. Like, I would just, I had a fear, what I thought was a fear of these things. And this past Thanksgiving, I mustered up what I thought was a fear. And I went deer hunting. I overcame my quote unquote fear. And I was like, you know what? I can do this. I can go out and look for these things. And December 7th, I, I started my field research and stuff, but I didn't know how to do it. I'm like, well, how in the world do I find a Bigfoot? I mean, I just looked up and stumbled across them. And I looked up Bigfoot research in East Tennessee. And lo and behold, Scott Carpenter's name popped up. But unfortunately, he had passed away at that time. And I'm like, man. So I I reached out to his son and stuff, and we talked, and he gave me a lot of insights and stuff, and we've become great friends now since then. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm going to head out here and hike and see what I can come across. And I I record behind me using the back trail camera like what Scott Carpenter had used. And, man, there's a lot more than just Bigfoot out there, and I found that out real quick. <laughs> yes, yes, especially – uh in Eastern Tennessee, in the, the Appalachian region, I have heard of a lot of very uh, interesting stories of creatures and all sorts of paranormal high strangeness and, and what have you. But yeah, that is a wild, wild story, Harley. Could you tell, you know, when you heard these, these creatures, could you tell exactly how many there were? I initially I just thought it was one until I had the analysis done, but they said there was definitely more than one individual that was producing those vocalizations because of the sounds that they were making. They're, they said that it could have been just different ones responding to that one. I don't know, or just trying to get me out of there. They didn't know for certain. All they could provide yeah. me with was there was more than one individual. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's pretty wild. And it's it's very uh, I would say a, a very good to have that analysis that, you know, suggests or maybe even proves that the, that was all the same species of, of animal or I tell you creature, the, I tell whatever you, the, you want to call them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, you know, and I, the funniest thing was I had somebody, oh, I know what that is. He's like, I got a buddy that's an expert in elk. And he sent the audio to that guy and he said, buddy, he said, I hate to break it to you, but that's not an elk. So, and I told him, I was like, I told you it wasn't an elk. Like I grew, like they reintroduced elk here in Tennessee in like the early 2000s, I think. And I've heard elk. I mean, they're everywhere here now. And I knew it wasn't elk. Yeah. So it's, it's unbelievable, man. It like, and I've, since then I've caught, I've captured more audio, but nothing, nothing like what I captured in 2020. It, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, definitely got to hear it. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I, I, geez, you know, that's just such a, I, I'm blown by the, my mind's blown by this, this story, you know, you hear all and read all sorts of, of stories like this, but you know, someone, you know, coming from a originally a non-believer in this kind of stuff. And then it just kind of uh somehow chooses you out of nowhere for who knows what reason to and reveal that's itself. Going, yes, yeah. exactly. It's like, why did it show itself to me of yeah. all things? And you know, and I've since then had five six more encounters in different areas and yeah. throughout appalachia here but i'm telling you they're they're they are everywhere here in yeah. East Tennessee. like i've been to probably six or seven different locations and i've run into them every time like whether it be just a brief glimpse of seeing one but 
they're out there. And I mean, there's a huge, huge debate on whether they're real or not. And I'll be one to tell you, I've got photographs of them and I've, I've actually got a video of one too. Um, and you know, I don't really share a lot of stuff out there, you know, because I just, my whole end game with all this is that, let people be aware that these things are out there. And if I can keep somebody safe from acting an idiot out there in the woods and taking one of these things off, my goal has been met. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. You know, there's a lot of people out there that would not, you know, don't have the best intentions for sure. Right. Uh, yeah. Whatever, whatever these things are, but you know, it's uh, it's really interesting that you brought up the, your brand new iPhone just dying and on like a, a full battery or whatever the percentage yep. was doesn't matter it just stopped working and you know there there is uh, often it sounds like high strangeness type of things uh, associated with a lot of bigfoot encounters uh where <laughs> electronics can be affected um obviously there's the whole blurry <laughs> blurry photos thing right, yes. uh, that that happens a lot but you know what was um has that been a consistent uh, pattern in, in future sightings that you've had? Uh, yes and no. Like with my back trail camera, when I'm hiking, they'll quote unquote what we call zapping. You know, why it happens, you don't know. I mean, could be a spike in electromagnetic field. It could be anything, honestly. But it definitely tends to happen more and more, um, which I, I tend to believe that these creatures, beings, whatever you want to call them, they are much, much more intelligent than what we can even imagine. I mean, and these people that lean more towards the ape effect, I was like, you know, if it was just an ape, there would already be one in a zoo by now. They would have these regulations in place. You know, they would, they would, there would be knowledge of them being out there, but we still don't have that disclosure yet. They've just come out with the UFO disclosure. Oh, hey, we know about them. It's time for cryptids, honestly. But, I mean, honestly, if we get enough people together, I mean, it may happen, but I truly highly doubt it because our government is corrupt, and I truly do believe that they are cooking up some of these things. Um, but, you know, after I, I started researching, uh, which I will admit, I used to think, that maybe they could be Gigantopithecus. After I first started my research, I was like, you know what? Maybe they are some kind of lost ape or ancient human. So I remember distinctly my second encounter. My wife was with me. Uh, she caught a glimpse of it, but she don't really remember all of it. We went out and we were hiking this trail. And I've, I've been in this area for a week at that time. I started December 7th. It was literally seven days being in there. And we were walking up the trail and when we were working our way back out, she nudges me on the shoulder. She says, look at that. I said, what? She said that those sticks over there, they look like something out of a movie. And I'm like, okay. So I walked off the trail about 30 yards and I was standing there looking at it. And I was like, this is weird. There's like sticks broken up, like sticking up like spikes. And I'm like, this is not natural. And there was two logs and Right in between the two logs, it looks like something had been laying in there. Now, the, the gap in between these two logs is probably about five, six feet. And you could see where something was laying in there. Well, me being what I do, I, I knew I was like, I can step this off and see how big this thing is. So I had a size 12 boot. and I stepped it off. It's about eight and a half feet long. And I'm like, this has got to be a big foot because I'm like, there ain't no black bear that big here. So. I'm standing in there. I remember distinctly hearing a noise out of my right hand side. I'm like, okay, there's something over here moving. And I'm like, it's probably a bear. So I hollered at my wife. I said, stay right there on the trail. I said, I'm going to ease on back here into these bushes and see what I see. Now, we have the mountain laurels here. They stay green year round. It's excellent cover for them. So I'm walking straight back and I come across this huge game trail. Like, I don't know if it's from the elk or the Bigfoot or what, but it's just huge. Like, there's just trees snapped off real high. It's just a perfect trail. And I'm standing there in the middle of this trail, and I just get this gut feeling that I need to look to my right. And I, st and I just turned on a dime, and I looked, and there was a tree. And, well, this reddish-brown Bigfoot walked in behind the tree, and I'm like, 
oh crap, this is a lot closer than my first one. Like this one was like 30 yards away from me and I, and it was close. And I remember distinctly, I'm like, what do I do? I, I was just froze. Now I'm standing there and I'm looking at this tree, this thing is behind. It steps out from behind the tree and it's facing directly towards me. And he crouches down and there's a bush. And he picks his head out of the bush to look at. He's red, he got reddish brown hair. He got gray skin. He's got these jet black eyes. And I'm just sitting here like, holy crap. It's like looking into the eyes of a human almost. Like when I was looking into its eyes and it was looking into mine, like there was some kind of soul there essentially. It was, it was weird. And all of a sudden to my left, there was a loud pop and a smack. And I'm like, oh gosh. And then right behind me, there was one stomping, like just stomping in place. And I'm like, all right, I got to get out of here. So I'm like, okay, I'm leaving. And I, I booked it out of there. Now here's the, here's the kicker. When I was looking at that one, my pistol was on my right hand side and I had one to my left and one behind me. They, they knew I had a weapon and they knew that they could essentially they I think they were toying with me to get me out of there. They were trying to test me to see what I would do. And I didn't pull a gun on them. So after that, I stopped carrying a gun on me, you know, as I learned then, you know, they're not going to hurt me. They just don't want me to go where I don't need to go. You know, essentially, I don't need to step onto their turf. So <laughs> going on the direct next couple of weeks there, I run through hours and hours and hours of footage. You know, I was running through my back trail and I had captured some dog man looking creatures because they're. They're not bears. Bears' ears kind of go off to the side of their head. These creatures have ears standing up on top of their heads. And I'm like, well, these are what they call, quote, unquote, dog man, I guess. Because essentially, I mean, I really didn't know about dog man at that point in time. And I'm like, well, they're werewolves, essentially. So I show them my buddies. I'm like, what are these things? They're like, well, those, those are dog men. You better stay clear of them. So <laughs> we... I'm a part of a research team called North Carolina Investigates, and they came up January 7th of this year. And we were, I was showing them this area, showing them all the structures and stuff that I'd found and, you know, showing them where I'd captured these things on film and showed them the steel captures. And we were walking up the trail and we find what we think to be a dog man track. Now, this was not a normal canine looking track had five toes and it was it was a very very weird looking track um it was about seven inches long by five inches wide it was a very strange looking track now we get to work on our way on up and we're on our way back out and i tapped my buddy george on the shoulder i said let's go down this trail right here and we'll work our way around this ridge and we'll cut across this little valley and come back up he's like all right so we had we had walkie talkies and we were in walkie contact with Robert and his wife and me and George were working away around this little knob and I just stopped dead in my tracks and I'm looking out of the corner of my eye because I got a glimpse of something moving through the laurels. Now these, these laurels are super thick out here. Like it's, it's excellent cover for these things. And, you know, quite frankly, they look like a shadow. Now I'm sitting here and I'm still looking out of the corner of my eye and George is like, well, what do you see? And I'm just, I'm sitting here and I'm like, George, there he is. He said, Harley, that's a shadow. I said, George is a Bigfoot. I just seen him move. And he's going in behind this tree. Now, he was peeking out and he was looking. I said, George, that's a Bigfoot. He said, Harley, that's a shadow. I said, George, stand right here. And I said, I'm going to walk towards it. And Jeff, I didn't step but 14 feet. And I stepped on this branch. And it sounded like a shotgun going off. This Bigfoot reaches up. Braces itself on the tree with its arm to lean out to look for me from where I'm at. My buddy George, he, <laughs> love his heart, he said, oh, shit. <laughs> Next thing I know, he was past me. The Bigfoot was long gone. And we get up there to the tree where it was at. And we find right there in the dirt, there was three perfect toes and you can see the pinky toe indention and the big toe intention I, and i was like holy cow and we named this bigfoot alfalfa 
because on this day, quite particularly, it was cold, wet, rainy, sleet, and snowy, and his hair was sticking up on his head like alfalfa from Little Rascals. <laughs> it was unbelievable, man. Like we we named him Alfalfa, and you know, my buddy George, he had never seen a Bigfoot. Like he was in the Navy and all this stuff. He's in his 50s, 60s, and uh, he was in the Navy and he's seen UFOs and all that stuff. But he had never seen a Bigfoot. But January 7th of this year, I made his first Bigfoot encounter happen. And let me tell you, hearing him tell that encounter, it never gets old. Like <laughs> he said, he's standing on that branch and it sounded like a shotgun going off. And this Bigfoot leans out and looks towards him. Like it, like I can't believe it. And so we go, we go looking, we go trying to find him because we knew we were right on his right on his tail so there was a a funnel through the bushes like something had been using it so i was like he's went through there so why don't we just go through there and robert radios over to us he said what in the world have you stirred up he said there's something coming through the woods like a bulldozer and i'm just like well it's a bigfoot we've we've jumped it up he's like well it stopped now because I guess because Robert was in the trail and his wife was on down ahead of him. Robert was dressed to head to toe in camouflage. And what we think was it seen him and it just snuck its way back around behind us. But I'm telling you, when you get into them laurel bushes, it's a place you don't want to be because that stuff is so thick. I mean, you could walk right by a bear, much less a Bigfoot or anything else and not even know it. Right. It's, It's unbelievable, man. And now a word from our sponsor. Break free from the ordinary and check out a podcast with thought-shattering concepts that will reshape the way you interpret the world. We are the Swerve Podcast, and our mission is very simple. Each episode, we research and discuss topics that swerve off the mainstream path in an attempt to understand everything in the universe one obscure topic at a time. Whether you're into forgotten history, cutting-edge science, strange frontiers of the unknown, or just need a good laugh in an uncensored way, the Swerve Podcast has you covered. Listen to the Swerve Podcast today on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any other major platforms. Now, before we get back to the show today, did you know that you can support the Strangeology podcast by becoming a member over on patreon.com forward slash strangeology? And you can sign up for as little as $1 per month. Any support helps out a ton and helps keep the lights on at Strangeology HQ. Higher tiers unlock more perks, like early access to new episodes and long format videos, which are also ad-free. You can also gain access to the members-only episode extension, Strangeology Beyond, which is sometimes a whole other research topic or an extended guest interview. There's also a merch discount for my shop, exclusive merch for members, voting power for topics I cover, behind-the-scenes bonus content, and more. So if you want to join a growing community of like-minded people who love the strange and unexplained, it's a great place to be. I appreciate the support so much, and the more of it that I get, the more content that I can create for everyone out there who loves the strange and unexplained. And to those members out there, thank you so much for your continued support. And welcome to our newest member, Rosaro. All right. Let's get back to the show. Wow. <laughs> that is an insane encounter. Holy smokes. <laughs> it was, man. Like, I, he, I, to make his first encounter happen, like, uh, it was a very special moment to share. Like, much less, I didn't think I was going to make somebody's first encounter happen with one of these things. And sure enough, I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, I wanted to, to go back to to the dog man thing now have these things been uh kind of cited in in tandem with bigfoot or is this something completely separate um you know in different areas that you run across these these things the dog man tend to be in the same area as the bigfoot it's it's almost like the lbl for instance well you have bigfoot and sasquatch out there yeah but my take on it is they're not enemies these things have a symbiotic relationship and these things are working together. Now, what I mean with that was why would two apex predators just go off the rails and kill each other when they could essentially gain a mutual respect? You know, these Bigfoot set up these hunting blinds, for instance, and Dogman flushed the prey towards the Bigfoot. Bigfoot gets first picks and then Dogman gets scraps. It's, I mean, I scratch your back 
you scratch your well, I I, I scratch. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say, but sure. <laughs> it's, it's essentially like a, it's like a symbiotic relationship. You know, it's not uncommon in nature. And who's to say it doesn't happen with these cryptids? Um, I've noticed here in this in this area that I've been in for eight months now, there's there's Bigfoot and Dogman in there. I found Bigfoot tracks and Dogman tracks like there's there is something going on there. Or I've been debating on this as well. The Bigfoot are taking these dog man pups essentially and raising them as dogs much like we humans do so i mean it, it sounds far-fetched really but i mean there's no such thing as a coincidence why would these two creatures be existing in the same area i mean you hear these tales of bigfoot and dog man fighting but i don't really, i don't really buy into that i mean if in the land between the lakes is a good instance for that i mean martin groves martin groves's encounter is unbelievable and martin groves is a great friend of mine and he he knows what's going on in the land between the lakes. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, um, for sure. He's he's someone I've been wanting to get on my show <laughs> for a while, but you know, schedules are are crazy these days. Um, but so I'm 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 wondering. So you've gotten into this whole investigation, like boots on the ground type of thing. You know, what is what is the typical uh, day in, in, in Bigfoot research look like to you? You know, what kind of preparations do you do before oh. heading out into the field? And, and how do you decide where to go? Because you have multiple different locations that you've been investigating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I, most of the time I just sit and look at a map. You know, I look for water, essentially, you know, water is a key thing, you know, because if you find water, there's going to be shelter somewhere, obviously, and there's obviously going to be food, you know, whether it's deer, berries, whatever the case may be, um, you know, and I'll, I'll do a lot of time over the maps and I've got a bunch of maps somewhere. I don't even know where I have put them. I have a map and I've put dots on where I've found structures and where I've seen them and where I've captured them on film because I've been in this place for eight months now. And I know this place like the back of my hand, like I, I, and when I run back through my footage and I look and I'm like, well, that's not supposed to be there, you know, and there'd be a dog man peeping up around a tree or whatever the case may be. Um, now the biggest thing for me though, is in the national parks, that's where they're going to be. The national parks, now not not all instances are going to be on national parks. I mean, you have these wildlife management areas. Um, and I've, I've, I've stumbled across dogmen on these WMA lands, and we'll dive into that in just a second. Uh, now, the biggest, the biggest thing that I do a lot is I just go out there with an open mind. You know, I clean my head out and I just go out there and I enjoy the wilderness. You know, it's my time away from the wife and kids and I, I do what I do. You know, I just go out there and hike around and I sit down for a little bit and I'll just listen, you know, just in my element, you know, cause I, I use my hunting tactics to this as well. You know, I don't go out there in camo, honestly, you know, I go out there short sleeve shirt, my pants and my snake proof boots, honestly. And I just, just take my time and I over, I look everything over good, you know, and I discern if it's natural or not. Now, some of these twist breaks, the the twist breaks are the biggest thing for me when it comes to the Sasquatch, you know, because it takes something with hands to twist a tree and break it. Now, if the, the, there's a perfect example, and we'll dive into this shortly, I found two twist breaks. Now, this was when I had my first dogman encounter. I thought I was going to see a Bigfoot, but I ended up seeing a dogman. Uh, so I found these twist breaks. One was twisted and broke, probably about eight and a half, nine foot off the ground facing up the mountain. The other one was probably about 12, 13 foot off the ground, twisted and broke facing down the mountain. Now, I looked around and I'm like, this can't be wind because there was no other trees that were broken like those. And I was like, no, that, that's a sign right there. Like something twisted those trees and broke them. And I've ac I actually found a, what I think to be a nest in that area. Uh, there were some branches that were bowed over and there was pine needles brought into that area. And you could see where something had been laying in there. Now, to my knowledge, a bear does not just do that. You know, something, something with intent made that. So this area where I had my first dogman encounter was close to a campground. Uh, it's not far from where I have been originally researched, but 
this happened January 29th of this year. Um, I've, I was, I had it in my mind that I was going to go to this first area that I've been in for a little over a month at that time. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go somewhere else. So I pulled up the maps and I'm like, okay, I'm going to hit this trail here. Well, I'm driving up into this place and there's a campground and I ended up finding another road that led off to a trail. And I'm like, okay, I can check this place out too. So I stopped at this first trail and I'm walking around and I'm looking and I'm like, okay, this place looks interesting because there was a creek that ran by there as well. And I remember distinctly finding these trees that were broken and they were made into an asterisk. And I'm like, that's not natural because these trees were laid on the ground and they made an asterisk. And I'm like, okay, this is signs because these trees were probably three or four inches around and they were broken at ground level and they were made into this asterisk. And I'm like, okay, this, this is something. So I'm walking around this area some more and I find these rock stacks now these rocks were lower three four foot across and they were in stacks of threes and i'm like well that's not nobody did that and there there was one stack and then about 20 feet away there was another stack of these rocks and i'm like that's not a person like i found these old settlement walls and stuff and it was nothing like that these rocks were huge and i'm like okay this is some signs but i'm like i'm not really feeling it in this place so I head further up to where this campground is, and there's a mountain trail that leads to a waterfall. So I'm going into this place, and it's just a really spooky vibe. I mean, it it was in the 30s that day, and it was cold, and I packed light. I just had my hoodie on and uh, some jeans and my muck boots, and I didn't even pack a toboggan. Um, so I'm walking along, and I cross this first creek, and there's old, they're just old wooden bridges. like They're, they're not really trustworthy. So um, I crossed this first bridge, I'm going around, I'm zigzagging, and I cross another bridge, and I'm zigzagging around, and I come to another bridge, which, I mean, they really shouldn't have been a bridge there because there wasn't much water, but whatever. So <laughs> I crossed that one, and I'm zigzagging around again, making my way around the mountain, and I come back down, and I cross this little half-made culvert, and they had... The, the, the land had washed away so it's just the culvert essentially and i go up and i come to split in the trail and there was a sign and the trail to the right which wherever it went i don't know but the park services didn't maintain it very well because it was overgrown i was like well i guess i'm going up the mountain so i took the mountain trail towards the waterfall and i'm walking along and i find this game trail that runs across the road and i'm like okay i'm just gonna walk over here and look because there was like a little flat area to the right and i was over in there looking around and that's when i found these twist breaks and some structures too because these tri these trees were intertwined and connected and all kinds of stuff i was like you know what i'm gonna run into a bigfoot i told myself i was like i'm gonna run into a bigfoot i was like this is bigfoot sign i'm gonna run into one it's gonna happen so I'm standing there looking around. I'm like, okay, I got to get back on the trail. So I get back on the trail and I'm working my way around and I come up to a curve, but I didn't make it to the curve yet. And I was looking, the curve goes up and it comes back around. And I'm like, okay. So I'm getting closer to the curve and I'm checking my phone. I had 30% battery and and I, I sent my wife my location uh, via satellite because I didn't have no service up there. So I sent it over satellite and I get around the curve and I check the phone again and it said 10% battery and it shut off. And I was like, well, this is deja vu all over again from 2020. So I'm like, okay, I got a decision to make. I can go on up a little bit or I can leave right now. And by this time it was starting to snow and it get colder. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going home. So I turned around and I go around a curve and it wasn't even 15, 20 yards after coming around a curve. I heard something behind me to my right moving and I'm like, okay. I'm going to stop and I'm going to turn on it um, and whatever it's going to is, is going to be there. I'm like, it's a Bigfoot. And boy, was I wrong. I stopped and I turned and I locked eyes on it. These bright yellow eyes, this large brown wolf, essentially. And I'm like, okay, this is something that I did not want to run into. And I'm sitting here looking at this thing. This thing's eyes were yellow. They were glowing. It was jet brown, like this. This was something that was not friendly. Now, 
this thing pushes itself up with its forearms and it takes three steps and it's beside of a tree and it props one of its hands up on the tree now this thing's hands man were very ominous looking they were almost like raccoon hands like if you've ever seen a raccoon's hands this thing's hands look like raccoon hands now this thing, the top of its head in between its ears was flat, and it had huge ears like a German Shepherd. It had a mane running down its neck. The end of this nose was smudged up into the snout. It had these huge yellow eyes. It had huge veins. Um, the top half of this thing was broad, and the lower half was thin. It had a thick, woolly tail like a fox's. And the weirdest thing, because what I heard, you know, what listen, What little I've listened to about the dog, man, they had backwards facing legs. This thing had forward facing legs like a human. And this thing was weird, man. Like it had its arm propped up on the tree. Like it was like playing with me. Like it was reaching out with its other hand, growling and snarling at me. And I like, when I looked into this thing's eyes, it was nothing. It was an empty void. There was nothing behind those eyes. And that's what I tell everybody. You know, when you look into the eyes of Bigfoot, there's there's something there. When you look in the eye of one of these dog men, that's that's nothing. There is nothing in there. That thing wants to kill you. Um, I remember distinctly my my life was flashing before my eyes, you know, my kids growing up without me, my wife being a widow without me, you know, everything negative was happening. And I'm like, I got to get out of here. So I start backpedaling. Like I'm taking back steps and I, I'm locked eyes with this thing. And next, I just booked it. Now, this was just pure instinct. I just, I just bolted. And I remember distinctly, I could hear it crashing behind me, but it was all, it was staying off in the woods, not in the trail. So I, I don't know how in the world I did not fall in these muck boots as slick and wet as it was with it snowing. But I remember I was booking it out of there. And I get down to the culvert, and I remembered seeing it jumping across the creek bed, across the creek, and going up. And I was going up, and I had to zig zag my way all the way around. And I get to the other creek, and I ended up trying to cross it and trying to keep keep look on it and try to cross this. And I remember distinctly seeing the brush moving because it was coming through the brush. And I just kept going, and I was like, I, I can't look back at this thing. I, I, I just got to get out of here. And when I got to that second bridge, I believe that's when it stopped following me. I'm not 100% sure, but I know that I got out of there. And I ultimately, when I got out of there, I about stopped doing my research. Um, it was, it was, it took everything in me, you know, to keep doing this. And, you know, I had a lot of people tell me, don't, don't stop. You know, you're getting good stuff. Don't, don't stop. And, you know, I, I've, I'm still here to this day and I'm very, I'm very fortunate and blessed. Um, so that that happened January 29th. Um, and I had a guy reach out to me from Virginia. He's a part of the North American Dogman Project. And he wanted to check out the location where I had seen this thing. And he had heard about my Bigfoot encounters. So had, by the time that far. And this is February 2nd. They came down. And we went to that location where I seen this dog man and we got the size estimate of this thing and everything. So this thing was eight foot tall, not including the ears. It was uh, 44 inches at the shoulders. Um, the stride from where it was laying to the tree was 28 feet. And it took that in three steps. Now, if that doesn't put anything into perspective on how fast these things are, yeah, nothing will. But here's the kicker. Right there in that spot where this thing was laying, I remember distinctly Rick pulled out his compass, and the compass was going haywire. Now, I don't know if there was a portal there or what, but something happened. Like, you know, I, to I fully believe that these creatures and these beings know where these portals are, you know, because... They're on a different spectrum than we are. You know, the veil, you can call it, so to speak. You know, they can see these doorways, essentially, and they know where they are, and we don't, you know. And in some instances of the fit missing 411, I think people walk into one of these portals and don't even know it, and they're gone forever. Or, ultimately, it's dogman or feral people, maybe a rogue Bigfoot. I mean, honestly, it could be a, a many things. Now, 
The second Dogman experience, I didn't see this one, but it was terrifying. Um, this happened April 28th of this year. Me and my stepdaughters' dad, uh, we went out turkey hunting. This happened, this happened April 28th, 20 minutes from downtown Knoxville, a highly populated area here in East Tennessee. This place is called Forks of the River. Now, we get out there about 4.30, waiting for the sun to come up. The sun's starting to come up a little bit more around 5.30, so we get out of the vehicle and we're working our way down the trail. Now, I wasn't researching this day. I ha I had full intentions to turkey hunt because this was the first spring that I had turkey hunted since 2020. So I'm like, you know, I got to do this. And I went out, and we were walking along with and we hit the owl call and we heard some turkeys gobble off in the distance. I was like, well, we got, we got to make our way back there. I was like, they're going to be in these big fields because we had a map pulled up of where they're going to be at. And I was like, they're going to be in these big fields, you know, strutting or whatever they're going to do. So we were working our way back and going to the swamp and we find these open fields and there was no turkeys. And I told him, I was like, you know what? This ain't worth it. So we go back and we're looking, and there, I remember distinctly seeing this shed that they kept the tractors and stuff in to mow the fields and stuff for dove hunting or whatever the case may be. So we went in the woods directly behind that shed. And he, Hunter was in front of me, and I was behind him, and we didn't even get 10, 15 yards into the woods, and there was something following us. And I was like, I can't say nothing to him. He'll start freaking out. I was like, it's just probably a Bigfoot. I was like, I, I ain't going to say nothing until he hears it. And it's, it's keeping pace with us behind us. And I'm just trying, I'm like, okay, this is not happening right now. I was like, he's he's got to hear this. So we're working our way along and we're in this dried up creek bed and we're going along and there's this tree that had fallen at the time and we had never been to this place before. So we, we didn't know anything. And there was a tree that had fell on over and we were trying to pull ourselves up out of this creek bed and we pulled ourselves up out of the creek bed and we got maybe 20 feet away from this tree and he stops and he said there's something following us i said yeah it's been following us for about 20 minutes now and this was 9 9 38 a.m and i took three pictures i turned around i took a picture to the left i took a picture straight behind us and i took a picture to the right and I put my phone down and I looked all the directions and I'm like, okay. I said, let's go. He said, what was it? I said, it's probably Bigfoot. He said, really? I said, yep. I said, it's bipedal footsteps, wasn't it? He said, yep. I said, yep. I said, that's probably Bigfoot. So we were walking around and we got back out. He brought me back home and dropped me off. And I looked through the first picture and didn't see nothing. But when I got to the second one, boy, did I see something. Right smack dab in the middle of that picture. And the creek bed that we just came out of is this huge pit bull looking face. And I sent that to him. He said, dude, what the hell is that? I said, that's a dog, man. I said, you're lucky you didn't see that. I said, if you'd have seen that, you'd have never be hunting again in your life. And it was unbelievable, man. He's like, he said, did we really? He said, did you really get a picture of that? And I said, yeah. I said, I said look, this is the timestamp. Like, this was when we were out there. He said, holy cow. So. He, he, and I'll tell you a funny thing, just recently, like the end of July, he was fishing and this is not too far from my research area. Uh, he, he caught a glimpse of something out of the corner of his eye. He seen a person and the person went behind a tree and he was like, well, this is weird. So he walked further down the creek away from this said person and he was standing there fishing again, and he had the feeling there was something behind him. And he turned around, and lo and behold, it was a feral person behind him. And he was standing there, locked eyes with this feral person, and this feral person had its arm behind its back. And he said, next thing he knew, the thing threw down a rock, and it took off. It was unbelievable. I was like, man, I was like, you're lucky. I was like, that thing was either going to kill you or it was just hoping you would have some fish. So, I mean, it, it was weird. Like, he said, he, he had fear in his eyes when he told me. Like, he, he as after that encounter happened, he came straight to me. He's like, dude, I just need a feral person. I'm like, I believe you. I can tell it in your eyes. 
So, I mean, there, there's all kinds of stuff happening here in Appalachia, you know, Bigfoot, dog, man, feral people, anything and everything. Yeah. Yeah. It really sounds like it. Definitely um, a lot of, a lot of stuff you don't want to run into. And, you know, that is one harrowing experience of you, you know, running on pure adrenaline, trying to get away from this dog man that's just coming after you and who yep. knows which i what, think i think ultimately probably what i done was there was probably a pup in the area or something but oh, I interesting do, i do remember that i looked up on the map and there was two cemeteries in that area now i did not see no headstones or nothing because these cemeteries are very very old but there is a connection between dog men and the cemeteries, which quite frankly, there's a connection between all of it. All of it intertwines and connects. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm kind of a, of a, of a similar opinion that there is uh, some interconnectedness between a lot of this high strangeness phenomenon. And, uh, you know, certainly, uh, based on your experiences, you know, it, it seems like, there's there's a paranormal element to to these creatures. They're not just flesh and blood, and whether yes. whether or not they're from Earth on this plane, or they're from Earth on you know so, some yeah. separate Another dimension. dimension. Another. Yeah, yeah. This seems to be kind of the uh, you know the the talk of the day, especially with even like the UFO subject and UAP subject. That it's yes. um, you know something that is not of this realm. There's there's exactly. other dimensions out there. So yeah, totally wild stuff. Totally wild stuff. Oh yeah, you know, and I'm very I I remember distinctly like going back through my steel captures on my back trail camera. I have that dog man on film, and I've it's leaning out from around the tree, and it's. I, I knew instantly that was the one I seen. I mean, it's Jet Brown, and he's just leaning out from around the tree, looking at me. I'm like, that. That's the same one I seen. So, you know, I I, I know for certain I've seen that one, and you know, Al, the one we named Alfalfa. I've captured him on film too, and there, there's just a lot. There's more than just Bigfoot and Dog Man going on. I, just recently, right before the Smoky Mountain Bigfoot Conference, uh, July 27th, I was out uh july 24th and i got something on film that day that i quite frankly don't know what it is um i'm walking through this area and it's just like half a second i i turn my shoulder for a half a second and i get it and this gray alien lizard looking thing i don't know what it was but it's just sitting there and it's peeking out like you can see its shoulder and you can see its head. It wild stuff, man. Like there's I don't know what it is. Like I was like, this is something that I don't know what it is. And just recently, I have found three toad tracks. Like they're they're track they're three toad tracks the size of my hand. And I'm just sitting here like, is there dinosaurs running around now? I mean, there's three toad, there's three toad tracks. And I'm like, to my knowledge, there is no ostriches or emus running around in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Like, I mean, it, it's just a huge three toe tracks that I've been finding. I'm just like, you know what? Nothing's surprising me anymore. Right. Yeah. I mean, it certainly sounds like uh, some kind of uh, avian or, you know, potentially dinosaur. Maybe there's <laughs> a, a time slip with terror birds or dinosaurs involved. Who knows? <laughs> it's on telling, man. Anything, anything is possible nowadays. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Now, um, I'm wondering like your opinion on, you know, beyond your own sightings and experiences with these things, what, what would you say is the, the best evidence that that's out there now, uh, of these cryptids? Ultimately for Bigfoot, it would have to be, the Patterson Gimlin film and the Ron Moorhead Sierra sound. Ultimately, that right there. I mean, even the Freeman footage. I mean, that that's a good video too. Um, and quite frankly, it it's unbelievable stuff, man. Like they have tried to prove that the Patterson film is a hoax for years, yet they can't because there is muscle tone, there is muscle movement. I mean. 
it's and the planet of the apes suits and stuff from back in that time nowhere near what is in that video and it, it's unbelievable man like people think that that is faked like i mean what what more do people need like that is a living sasquatch how they drew i've heard a lot of theories on how they drew that big foot in i don't know there's a lot of debate on how they got that video i heard it was pretty harsh i don't know um there's a lot of there's a lot of theories on that you know they i heard a theory that they captured juveniles and they killed them and that's what draw it in i don't know honestly or they may have just looked up and stumbled across it i mean it, anything i mean if you put yourself in the position you're going to have an encounter an experience like that i mean I, I put myself in a position i mean i'm hiking miles and miles out in great smoky mountains national park i mean it's it's unbelievable man and you know the the sierra sounds i mean that it's unbelievable like you can tell that 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 is something that is human but not human in a way it's uh i have heard the samurai chatter myself I never thought I was going to ask. Yeah. You know, it sounds like when you're hiking along, it sounds like there's more hikers ahead of you or behind you. It's just blah, 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 or just like mumbling, essentially. It just sounds like people from far off. And then you're just sitting there like, where are these people at? I mean, it, I mean, I've heard that, for instance, about the feral people, too. Like, they'll, they'll have the talking and stuff. But the Bigfoot are very distinct. It's almost like a native american language fast paced intertwined with like japanese or something else like that it's a very very strange language uh i know that i have i've been trying to talk to them in cherokee tongue as well as hebrew um because i've noticed that in some instances it almost sounds like he hebrew in a way like a, a native a native american and hebrew tongue almost connected and intertwined I know they understand English. I mean, because people have the mind speak happen to them. I, I had the mind speak happen once, and that was the strangest thing that had ever happened to me. Um, it happened on New Year's Eve of 2023. So I go out to this area that I had been in that whenever I started, and I didn't even get 50 yards away from the vehicle, and I had a voice go through my head, and it said, Jerome. And I'm just like, I'm looking around, and I'm like, I'm the only person out here. And I was like, well, what in the world is Jerome? And I went off in the woods and I'm sitting there looking and I'm like, holy cow, this is an X because I, I found this huge X. And, and I initially started looking at it more and it actually makes the A because there's a the X and then it has a, a branch that goes across and it makes the an A. And I'm like, well, what in the world does this mean? I was like, clearly it's something because I could see in the moss where they had been stepping around in that area. And I'm like, Okay, something, something's, something's weird. So I got home, and I looked up what Jerome means. It's ancient Greek for elder or guardian. <laughs> yeah, it was very, very weird. It, it's like a voice in your head that's not your conscience. Like, it just shoots right through you, and it, it's a very, very weird theory. Like, you know, and I'm, because I tend to lead more towards Bigfoot, are an interdimensional being, but there is a side of them that you don't want. Um, I will say that you go looking for them. It is an open invitation for them to come into your home. And around it, February of this year, I had paranormal stuff start happening in the home. Uh, my daughters, well, I mean, right now, they used to would sleep all night and i mean even the now like they just have these nightmares and they can't sleep and it's just a very very strange stuff i've heard voices in the house just cold chills happening in the house and stuff falling even uh my stepdaughter's dad was here with me one night while our wives were out and we heard something fall and we were like well, what what was that and we go in the girls' room and we're checking and they're both sound asleep in the bed. And we're like, well, what was that? And lo and behold, we never did find anything, but there was something that had failed. And it was just a very, very weird instance. And I'll tell you a funny thing too. So my the, the woods is right behind the house. And uh, right 
right behind the house. They they come up from the woods, and I started keeping my porch light on after this started. Um, they would come up. And they would take the spare tire off of the trash can because I kept the trash, the tire on it to keep the raccoons out. And they would move the spare tire, put it on the back porch where the door would open and hit it. And it was, it was wild stuff. And, uh, and the weirdest thing was after I would cook, I would close my grill and I'd come back out and the grill would be open. And I'm just like, Man, y'all gotta stop this. So I just I just started leaving the porch slide on and they stopped messing with the spare tire and the the uh, grill. So <laughs> I mean, I, I'm tell I always tell people, you know, there there is more to these beings than just flesh and blood. You go looking for them, they will come into your home. I mean, you go into their home essentially and you get you have the comp it's unintended consequences. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely, um, uh, sounds a lot like, uh, the hitchhiker effect, which, yes. um, yes, absolutely. I, yes. I, I became very familiar with, I recently, um, I got to chat with, uh, some of the folks from Skinwalker ranch and, um, they were chatting all about the hitchhiker effect, how things follow them home from the ranch, paranormal pol poltergeist activity happens at home, uh, other strange stuff like electronics being affected, um, in two different places around the country at the same time, um, <laughs> like quantum entanglement it's type of stuff. Exactly. Like, yes. Yeah. So that's, um, pretty unnerving for sure. Uh, hope you're, it is, it is. Yes. Yeah. Because that is a power that we do not fully understand. Yeah. You know, it, well, what it, do you do? <laughs> exactly. It is a, what do you do? Instance. I mean, you know, what do you do if a demonic presence or entity you know attaches itself to you i mean i mean you could go to the church or something and get it out of you but i mean it it's 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 hard man like i i think about it all the time you know i'm like what what if that happens to me like it, it i mean i try not to think about it you know i like to think that i'm strong in my faith and all this stuff but it's it's wild man and i mean i've had i've got hair samples and they're being tested in north carolina right now and um i'm waiting to hear back from those results um but i will add on to this that um from scott carpenter's research he collected samples from here in the great smoky mountains and especially from this area that i have been in for over eight months now uh the seventh coming up will be nine months and from this area he collected bigfoot hairs and I mean, there's a lot of debate behind the Ketchum DNA study and all this stuff. But me, quite frankly, that's the honest to God truth. And people just don't want to accept that Bigfoot is what it is. And they are a human hybrid um, because the mitochondrial DNA of a Bigfoot is a human mother from the Middle East. And the nuclear DNA is something completely unknown to science. And that is what I believe to be the fallen angels. And I recently learned a new term. Um, so the Nephilim, I don't know if you're familiar with the Nephilim. Sure. The Nephilim, they had children. So those, there was a woman that was talking with a friend of mine, and they, she had a relationship with a Bigfoot. It would come to visit her in its physical form and as an orb. And it would communicate with her telepathically. And it told her that it was an LEU, which are the children of the Nephilim, the, the LEU. I have never heard that term before. It told her it was an LEU. And it told her that the Bible was wrong about certain things and all kinds of stuff. Huh. All kinds of crazy stuff. The LEU, it's, uh, it's something I had never heard of before. It's a wild, wild term. Yeah. Wow. I was not expecting that. <laughs> Man. Yeah. It just goes to show that there's just, uh, the, despite all the research and investigation, there's still so much that we don't know Absolutely. Ab about this phenomenon, about these creatures. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, it's more, it go, it brings more questions and answers and the deeper down the rabbit hole you go. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, 
uh, did you uh, recently see uh, Ronnie LeBanc's statement about um, some new footage that was uh, filmed recently? Yes. Yeah. I, I, I've heard, and I'm trying to pry it out of Ronnie, and he will not budge. Uh, <laughs> I've been trying yeah. to pry it out of him, and he won't budge. So. Yeah, yeah. He, was... he just recently joined my uh, Facebook group, uh, and we just hit 5,000 members in there, and I've been trying to pry it out of him. He won't budge. I mean, oh, it, yeah. It must be a pretty big deal. I mean, it, it, it's got to be. I mean, it. <laughs> I don't know who got the footage, but – we can only imagine who got the footage. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. It'll, it'll be very interesting to see uh, what comes of that for sure. Cause I know that was kind of making the rounds. Uh, uh, the other oh, it week. was everywhere. Everywhere yeah. I scrolled, Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, everywhere, TikTok. <laughs> it was everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it'll be the, the smoking gun that. Uh, I, I mean, it might, it might be the ring off the new year. I mean, I, I mean, we may never know. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. <laughs> All right. Well, Harley, this has been super fun. Um, Very enlightening, very interesting conversation with lots of twists and turns. You have, I mean, you're going, you're going out there, you're doing the work um, and experiencing these, these creatures and this phenomena firsthand. And uh, I I can't wait to see, you know, what comes next. Um, And before we go today, can you tell my listeners uh, where, they can find you online. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh most of the platforms, uh, I'm, I'm on YouTube, Bigfoot reports and data. It's the and symbol. Uh, that's my Facebook group name as well. Uh, I'm on Instagram as well. Bigfoot reports and data. Like it's just a and D. Uh, I'm on TikTok as well. Bigfoot reports and symbol data. Um, and I, I encourage everybody, you know, I work 40, 50 hours a week, I man, 40, if I'm lucky, um, and I make time out of the day to go out and look now with winter coming up, it's probably going to be a little bit more difficult to be out there as much, maybe on the weekends if I'm lucky, if I don't have to go chase storm or whatever, but you know, I, I just want to encourage anyone, you know, be safe when you're out there, when you go stay in your lane. So essentially when you're out there, stay on the sidewalk and they have a leash that they're on and if you stay on the sidewalk you won't be bothered i mean they'll let you know if you get too close but you know listen to your gut because if you don't listen to your gut you'll get killed solid advice for sure definitely if you're wanting to go investigate these things for yourself don't take it lightly and be prepared and definitely be safe absolutely 100 percent yeah. All right, Harley. Well, thank you so much again for hanging out today. We'll talk to you hey, soon. Absolutely. Look forward to it. All right. Thanks again so much to Harley for coming on the show. Definitely check out his website and his YouTube channel, which are all linked in the show notes for this episode and you can actually see his on the ground investigation videos super interesting stuff and also check out the donation link again in the show notes to help out families in need after the hurricane helene natural disaster that affected a very large portion of appalachia just recently your support helps so much And if you are a member over on my Patreon, I will be posting some exclusive images that Harley sent me of some very compelling photos of Bigfoot, Dogmen, tracks in the woods. Really makes me think that there are some unknown creatures lurking out there in eastern Tennessee and the Appalachian Mountains in general. As always, I want to give a huge thank you to everyone out there who checks out the Strangeology podcast. Those of you who download it, share it with friends and family, and it helps me out so much when you do that. The Strangeology podcast wouldn't be possible without the support of listeners like you. 
To any advertisers or companies out there looking to collaborate with the Strangeology podcast or would like to be considered for an interview on the show, please send all business inquiries to info at strangeology.com. And I'm also looking to gather more stories for a listener submitted stories based episode. So if you have encounters with the strange and unexplained, if you've seen a cryptid, had a paranormal experience or experience with ghosts or the occult or anything like that, get in touch. Info at strangeology.com. I'd love to hear your stories. And if you haven't yet, again, make sure to give me a follow over on social media. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, X, Threads, TikTok, YouTube. I'm most active posting short form content on Instagram and TikTok, looking to expand my longer form video library back catalog on YouTube as well. So if you're looking for more from me, definitely check all of that out. And don't forget to check out my Instagram for occasional giveaways. I'll be hosting one very soon. So keep a lookout for that. And if you're looking for another way to support Strangeology, again, you can check out my Etsy shop, strangeology.etsy.com, where I have a whole assortment of cryptid, alien, and Fordian gear available on items like t-shirts, hoodies, long sleeves, sweaters, tank tops, and there's also items like stickers, magnets, prints, mugs, enamel pins, blankets, tumblers. I've got the brand new Halloween design in the shop. And since we're rapidly approaching the holidays, I'm hoping to add a couple new holiday themed designs. I also have ornaments as well for the holidays. So definitely check all of that out. Strangeology.etsy.com. And I appreciate your support so much. The links will be in the show notes. All right, that is all for me for now. I'm going to take a quick break here. Harley was able to stick around for quite a while longer to chat about more of his encounter stories with Bigfoot and Dogmen in the Appalachias, as well as some other wild stuff. You don't want to miss it. Patrons, stick with me and for everyone else. Until the next time, take care of yourselves and each other and keep it strange. Patreon members, welcome back to your exclusive portion of the show, Strange Allergy Beyond. And thank you again, Harley, for...